The title of this message is Our Adversary, the Devil. Our Adversary, the Devil. In Ephesians 5, 11 through 13, the Apostle Paul tells us to expose the unfruitful works of darkness. He tells us to have no fellowship with them and that when they are exposed, they're made manifest by the light. Today, I'm going to expose the devil for who he is. This message, our adversary, the devil, will let you see what he's all about. Peter understood the devil, for the devil convinced him to betray his precious Lord. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, he tells what he learned about the devil. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Would you pray with me, Father, in Christ's name, we thank you for this day. Lord, I'm aware of the assignment that is before me today. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Empty me of myself and fill me with nothing but your mighty, powerful Holy Spirit. Father, may not one word leave my tongue, but that it does not first come from thee to me. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our adversary, the devil. Peter tells us that we have an adversary. We have an enemy who is the devil. And he calls the devil a roaring lion who is seeking someone to devour. The devil is the greatest enemy of Christ and his followers. It's called spiritual warfare. And we're to be self-controlled and watchful and alert because the devil is always seeking an opportunity for a vicious attack. He hates everything the Christian stands for in his life. Peter tells us to resist the devil by being steadfast, standing firm in our faith. Other Christian brothers and sisters in the world are resisting the devil, and so can we. How do we resist? How do we withstand the devil? James tells us this in the book that bears his name, James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Today, I want to build this message on these three points as I expose the devil, our chief adversary. First of all, we're going to talk about the origin of the devil, the origin of the devil. Secondly, we're going to talk about the character, the character of the devil. And thirdly and finally, we're going to talk briefly about dealing with the devil. How do we deal with the devil? Our adversary, the devil. First of all today, let's talk about the origin of the devil, the origin of the devil. That's found in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 15. The origin of the devil... Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 15. Where did the devil come from? Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise, and the emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. The origin of of the devil. The devil was an angel in heaven. His name was Lucifer. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 tells us that he was called the son of the morning by God. He was the most brilliant and the most beautiful of all the created beings in heaven and he knew it. God has an angelic network and Lucifer and Michael were most likely the two archangels. Their job is to spread their wings over the mercy seat of the ark of the covenant. They represent the angels associated with God's holiness covering the place where atonement was made between God and man by the sprinkling of blood. Lucifer was an anointed cherub, meaning that he was the highest angelic creature in the presence of God's full glory and holiness. He had a special place of prominence in guarding the throne of God. He had free access to God's holy mountain, heaven, 
as well as to the Garden of Eden. That, ladies and gentlemen, is power. Only the living God of heaven and earth had more power than Lucifer. He was perfect. And the Bible tells us in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 15, he was perfect till sin was found in him. This is where the devil comes from. He's God's chief angel in heaven, the origin of the devil. Secondly today, let's look at the character of the devil, the character of the devil. Back in Ezekiel chapter 28, let's look at verses 16 through 19. Ezekiel 28, verses 16 through 19. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror, and you shall be no more forever. Lucifer was beautiful, and he knew it. Do you know a man who is handsome, and he knows it? Do you know a woman who is beautiful, and she knows it? That was Satan, Lucifer's problem. And it caused his fall from God's government in heaven. He became proud. And he decided that he no longer wanted to serve God, but he wanted to be like God. He wanted to dethrone God. He wanted to be worshipped, not to do the worshipping. He desired to replace God as the ruler of the universe. Lucifer had pride, and his pride is seen in his I will thinking. His pride is seen in his I will thinking in Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 14, we read about Lucifer's five I wills. First of all, he said, I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend into heaven. Secondly, Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Thirdly, Lucifer said, I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the far north. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the far north. Fourthly, he said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. He wanted to usurp the glory of God. And fifthly, Lucifer said, I will be like the Most High. I will be like the Most High. He wanted to possess heaven and earth. Pride caused Lucifer to be thrown out of heaven. In the dictionary, Mr. Webster says, pride is conceit meaning you're struck on yourself. You have an inordinate amount of self-esteem. Do you know anyone who is prideful? Do you know anyone who is arrogant? That was Lucifer's problem. Proverbs six seventeen. God tells us he hates pride. It's a sin that God hates. In Proverbs sixteen eighteen, the Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. I heard Bailey Smith, the great evangelist, many years ago say this, and I quote, Arrogant preachers always fall. Arrogant preachers always fall. Arrogance and pride cause many people to get out of the will of God. If you're afflicted today with those two sins, I plead with you to repent and make it right with your Lord today. God threw Lucifer out of heaven and he came down to earth and God changed his name to Satan, meaning the devil, the devil. And the name Satan means accuser. The name Satan means accuser. He accuses us before God day and night that we're not worthy to be his children. And when God kicked him out of heaven, he sealed his eternal destiny to the place called hell. In Revelation 20.10, the Bible says this, And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Perhaps you are in the clutches of the devil today. 
He has a stronghold on your life today. You're watching this message today and, and you've just pulled a big drunk. You've been out all night and you've been involved in some lewd, perverted behavior. And the Spirit of God is convicting you and He's speaking to you right now that it's time for you to repent of your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to be your Lord and Savior by faith. The Bible says that we're all sinners in need of the Savior. The Bible says that God sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world. The Bible says to get right with God, we've got to ask Him to forgive us of our sins. That's what repentance is. We've got to turn from our sins and we've got to change our mind about our sins. Today, I want to ask you to do that. And then I want to ask you today to place your faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is God's love for you and me that we do not deserve. And because of His love for you and me that we do not deserve in our faith in Him, we can be saved. You can't save yourself. I can't save you. Only Jesus can save you today. And then to be born again, you must know that God loves you and He will forgive you. All you have to do is call on His name today. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus to save you today, and He will. As with all leaders who rebel and fall, when God kicked Satan out of heaven, He took many other rebellious angels with Him. He had a following. People who are in leadership roles, who are arrogant and prideful, they always have a following. And when they fall, the people following them fall. In fact, in the Bible, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 4, and verses 7 through 9, we read that Satan took one-third of the angels of heaven with him when God kicked him out. These are the demons who are now assist Satan in his evil work in the world system. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These demons who assist the devil are vicious. They're deadly. They will do anything that they can to destroy you and to destroy me. Satan and his demonic forces do all they can to stop the great work of God's redemptive plan for the world. They've been doing this since the dawn of time in the Garden of Eden where Satan convinced Adam and Eve to disobey God. Satan tried to stop the messianic line so Jesus could not be born in Matthew chapter 2, verses 16 through 18. Satan tried to conquer Jesus in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Satan possessed Judas' body in John chapter 13, verse 27 so he could betray Jesus. And then the praise God that He could not prevent Jesus from dying on that cross, from being resurrected from that grave after three days. And when Jesus died on that cross for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world, He came back to life after three days. And when He did, He gained victory over death and hell and the grave. 1 Peter 3.18, the Bible says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And then, as we're looking again at the character of the devil, let's go a little deeper today. What is his true character? Well, in John 8.44, Jesus calls the devil a murderer. And He says He has been a murderer from the beginning. He calls him a liar and the father of lies. People who murder people. People who incessantly and habitually and pathologically lie are controlled by the devil. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. The Bible says, Paul tells us that Satan is a deceiver. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 and 14, he disguises himself as an angel of light. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, the devil accuses us before God and he tells God that we're not worthy to be his children. He allures us with temptation to sin against God and to sin against our bodies. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, we read that Satan is crafty. Just ask Adam and Eve. In Job chapter 1, verse 9, 
we read that Satan is slanderous. In Luke chapter 8, verse 29, we read that he is fierce. He's a fierce fighter. In Ephesians 2, 2, Paul calls the devil the prince of the power of the air. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 13, John says that the devil is a coward and he is evil. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Paul calls the devil the God of this age who has blinded the minds of men and women and boys and girls to the truth of the gospel message. The wicked people of this world are the devil's children in 1 John chapter 3, verse 10 and Acts chapter 13, verse 10. In John 8, 44, we read that the evil people of this world do the will of the devil. And then in Luke chapter 22, verse 3, we read that the devil does possess people who are not born again. Yes, I not only believe in demonic possession, but I've seen people who are possessed of demons. And it's even worse to not only see people who are possessed by demons, but it's even worse to be attacked by people who are possessed of demons. But remember this. If you've truly repented of your sins and made Jesus your Lord and Savior by faith, you cannot be possessed of demons. You can be controlled by the devil when you're not in the Word of God and you're not praying regularly, you're not attending church, you're not sharing your faith, you're not growing as a Christian. You can be controlled by the devil, but you cannot be possessed by the devil. A person who has never been born again can be, and many are possessed by the devil. People who are saved, but who are not walking with Christ are great tools in the hand of the devil. Christians who are living with unconfessed sin in their life, unconfessed habitual pathological sin in their life, they are controlled by the devil. He may not be able to possess you, but he sure can control you. The devil can come after you with his book of tricks as a Christian. But you have the freedom from God to say, yes, I want the devil to have control of me, or no, I will not allow him to have control of me. I'm going to submit myself to the Lordship of Christ every day. There's an old, old word that the Christian can use when attacked by the devil, and that word is spelled N-O, no. You may attack me today, Satan, but I'm not going to let you have these areas of my life. You have the freedom as a Christian to do as the devil leads you to do, and you have the freedom to say no. The Christian can resist the devil in James 4, 7. How can the Christian say no? Only, not in your own self, but only by the power of God which is in you. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible says this, You're of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible tells us that the whole world lies in the power of the devil. In 1 John 5, 19, if you're born again, he cannot control you. And he's on his way to an eternal burning hell forever and ever, but he will not take you if you've really and truly been born again. You're eternally secure in the hands of God. In John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30, and remember this, God places limitations on the devil. In Job 1.12, we read that the devil had to get permission from God to attack Job. The devil has to get permission from God to attack you as a Christian, to attack me as a Christian. He does not know everything, meaning omniscient. He cannot be everywhere at once, meaning omnipresent. But he has demons who assist him in his evil work in the world system. Our adversary, the devil. We've looked at the origin of the devil. We've looked at the character of the devil. And thirdly and finally, dealing with the devil. How do we deal with the devil? Well, in Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18, Paul teaches clearly about how to put on our person the whole armor of God. He teaches how we're to put on the whole armor of God of God. The Christian every day should ask God to put on them the whole armor of God as outlined in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. 
the origin of the devil, the character of the devil, and how to deal with the devil. Peter knew what he was talking about because he denied his Lord. He allowed the devil to get a hold of him before Jesus was crucified on that cross at Calvary for his sins and your sins and my sins and the sins of the world. In 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, Peter says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You know this today. The devil can't win when your heart is pure before God. The devil is the God of this age and he deceives millions of people all over the world every day in all walks of life. Many of them think that they're born again when they've never really and truly been born again. 1 John 3, 8 tells us that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He can open your eyes to the truth that you're a sinner in need of the Savior. Will you let Jesus open your eyes today? Right there where you are right now. You've just come off a big drinking bench. You had a, you've just had a night of, of where you've used a lot of different drugs. No matter where you are right now, no matter what you're doing, I want you to stop right now. As the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart, I want you to stop right now and pray with me to ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. He loves you. And that's why He wanted you to hear this message today. I want you to pray with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I need Your forgiveness. I know that You died on the cross for me. I repent. I turn from all my sins. Please forgive me. I now accept You as my Savior. And I follow you as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me, I pray. I give to you, sweet Jesus, complete control of my life. Thank you for saving me. Give me the peace that I have truly been saved. In Jesus' name, amen. I praise God. And I rejoice with the heavenly host today that the devil no longer has control of you. Perhaps you've, you've watched this today and you've even been possessed of demons at different times in your life. And today, they no longer have control of you because you've turned from your sins, repented of your sins, and asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior by faith today. And now Christ is living inside of you. I want to help you in your new walk with Him today. I want you to write to me. I have some materials that I want to send to you to help you get started in your new walk with Christ. And be sure and get involved in a good, balanced, biblical, Bible-believing church in the community where you live and ask your pastor to baptize you. I love you. I thank God for what He's done for you today. And I look forward to seeing you next time on A Date with Destiny. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be the first to know when we publish new content.